All right, here's a 2006 Ford F-350 with the 6.0 liter diesel engine. Currently, as of August 16, 2021, has 150,700 miles on it. Uh, it's black, new tires as of July 2021, BF Goodrich 275, 65, 20s. 20 inch aluminum rims, alloy aluminum rims. Uh, also in July of 2021, replaced and updated the front brakes, all new brake pads, rotors, one new caliper on one side. Actually one new caliper bracket on uh, the driver's side. New tie rod ends. And the lowers. New ball joints, U joints seals for the hub total $2,800 of work including the tires uh, has aftermarket uh, mirrors folding and telescoping mirrors manual folding telescoping heated though uh, these are from a1 auto i believe the original stock ones i had gotten damaged from a tree absolutely no rust on the on the, the truck the bottom of the doors are dirty, but that's from my rust prevention, which I'll discuss in a little while. Has a tunnel cover. This is the Access Laredo. Been on it here since 20, 2014. The truck was purchased in, I purchased it in February, well, actually be March 1st, actually February 29th of 2014. It was a leap day and bought it in Ardmore, Oklahoma at the Billingsley Ford dealership in Ardmore, Oklahoma. Drove it home. The reason why I purchased it in Ardmore, Oklahoma was number one, it was one of five trucks nationwide from on, on, on auto, auto Trader that met my criteria as far as uh, what I was looking for in it. And number two, no rust. Uh, trucks of t this age. Uh, even in 2014, I was eight years old at that point, had rust, and uh, I did not want to buy one with rust on it. And uh, so it was driven home at that point, I bought it with 65,000 miles. Uh, they had tried selling it, and but it ended up having bad head gaskets. One guy had bought it and drove it away a week and a half later, blew the head gaskets on it. And so he returned it, got a refund, and the dealership uh, replaced head gaskets at 65,000 miles. Uh, did not put studs in it, but they checked the heads and all that fun stuff. I've got the paperwork for it. Uh, and did some other work to it at that point, too. Um, but since then, I've had it. I've, well, obviously, it's 150,700 miles on it, so 65 to 150, almost almost 95 90,000 85,000 miles on it since I've had it in that and with with no head studs uh, and I ha do have it tuned as well the front air dam is not stocked for this truck this is from a newer truck uh, probably like a 2008 or newer I'd imagine but I do have a western snowplow on it I've been using the Western Snowplow since I purchased in 2014. Uh, that can most likely, we're going to keep the blade unless the purchaser offers appropriate amount of money for the blade. Uh, the blade is 20, uh, Western MVP, MVP Plus uh, 8 foot 6 V plow and it's in excellent condition for the age. It's always stored inside. The interior. Pull the keys. Has a sunroof. No issues with that. Climate control by temperature, just you know, it's for the cab. Four wheel drive, upfitter switches. Uh, number four is high idle at the moment. Trailer controller. I have the Edge Insight CTS for monitoring. A uh, bunch of stuff on it. I got the fuel pressure, boost pressure, Husky floor, line, floor um, liners, 
leather seats the driver's seat is, is of course the most used and a couple cracks here and there uh, but otherwise it's in really good shape I always use the leather conditioner on it it looks it looks used for a, I mean, a truck with 150,000 miles on it so as far as rust prevention goes I am a big proponent of using fluid film uh, fluid film is a lanolin based product that is sprayed on the underside and all the cracks and crevices of the truck so sprayed on the bottom of the door I took this door seal off because lanolin is not good for uh, rubber that is not treated for oil so the, the bottom door seals are not treated for oil so it would they would they would just look like crap so I took them off because I really don't need them it gets a little dirty in here but just rinse it off in the winter uh, so every fall I spray have sprayed fluid film on the under, complete underside and the first couple applications uh, the spray kit that I have includes hoses so all of the rocker panels up all the rockers up inside have been sprayed I just take this plug out stick my finger inside and it's a greasy dirty film uh, that's the fluid film so there's absolutely no rust on any of the rockers everything is solid metal it's really dirty you see my fingers but it's solid clean metal not clean there's no rust no pitting paint is still there in great condition now one note i don't know if you can see them here there's a bubble right there and a bubble right there that showed up probably four to five years ago uh, that has once they showed up I sprayed maybe a quart to a half a gallon of the fluid film up inside the inner fender because there's foam but there's there's foam between the outer fender and the inner fender here and I sprayed fluid film up up in there and no kid you not it was it's four five six years ago it was shortly after I purchased it um, and I think that's just due to water getting up in there and it just even if it's not salt It's just water it gets up in there and sits there and corrodes from the inside out So these bubbles have been there for four to five years now and have not advanced or gotten bigger at all uh, so I I'm Happy with that. It's been great. It hasn't hasn't expanded hasn't gotten worse And you can't get it any better than what it is now um, so we gotta, gotta live with that, those two little bubbles. But that's the only sign of anything on this whole truck. Um, and luckily the fluid film has worked to stop that advance. Uh, if we, I should probably get a light, but every, everywhere underneath is in really dirty from the fluid film and the road dust and grime. But everywhere you look is gonna be completely rust free. If you look underneath the back end, I've got an up aftermarket or upgraded uh, rear differential cover. Typically, they're stamped steel on these trucks, and the, the 2008s and newers came with an alumini, aluminum uh, with fins on it. So I put that differential cover on shortly after purchasing it. Has the Gatorback Ford mud flaps. You can get close here to the hitch. You can see. Typically any hitches of any considerable age, even a couple years old, are going to be all rusted in all these uh, welds and such. If you look closely, if I wipe the crap away, there's not a spot of rust anywhere around this hitch. We'll come with this bulletproof hitch, uh, six, six inch drop, two inch ball, two and five sixteenths inch ball. New truck is going to have a three inch receiver, so I don't have a need for this two inch receiver. Rear parking sensors. Aftermarket exhaust. Uh, the original truck had a complete straight pipe and it had some issues with it. So, I, a year or two ago, I put the MRBP, MBRP uh, four inch exhaust. It has a muffler, flow through muffler on it as well. Uh, but it it sounds good it's not as loud as the other older one but it's it still sounds good um, 
And I mean, there's still some surface scratches. Here's a little, here's a little scratch there. Uh, light scratching, probably could use a good buff job, but I haven't done that. It does have car seats, or I've had car seats in it since new, or since I purchased it in 2014. Uh, so I mean, there's little depressions where the car seat sat. Fold down on the back, little drink area. Kids like that, they just figured that out. I can't get it with 30 fingers. There we go. Again, the bottom of the door is dirty, but there's no rust. And the dirt is just, it's from, you know, I spray the fluid film on and it just accumulates dust, dust and dirt over time and grime. All right, so underneath here, we can see that everything just rock solid dirty and it's got a coating of dirt slash food film. It's actually called wool wax now. They changed the formula a little bit. But everything is just solid dirt, but it's also <coughs> almost slant in my mouth. Is also completely cleaned. Clean metal. You know, this probably could be pressure washed with a short pressure wash wand and to get the majority of it off, but I never found a need because Frankly, this stuff is still doing rust prevention. Uh, it penetrates any of the welds, any of the seams, spot welds of the paneling. You know, I've got it everywhere coated underneath now. And I probably, I mean, only really need probably now future applications, you know, touch up the frame. Even the frame has got, you know, the frame has got it on it. Um, but it really doesn't need much for touch up. Because it's it's saturated all over, you know. I've gotten hole, up in these holes inside the rockers. You know, typically a truck is probably going to be rotten here, of this age. But this is in un. You know, once if you've got this cleaned off with a pressure washer, it's probably a good eighth inch thick right now of just grime and fluid film from years of years of of, of application, seven years of application. Um. So that's. There's the muffler for the exhaust. This is probably only a year and a half old. Um, just replaced the carrier bearing on the drive drive shaft. You can look up front there. I don't know if you can see it, but I do have a Fumoto valve on the oil drain pan. Makes for easy easy oil changes. Every five thousand miles, I've been using. Dello for the most part, 5W40, full synthetic, and also every oil change I put a pint of arch oil in it uh, to prevent any issues with the stiction on the injectors. If you know a 60, there's always stiction issues, so I've been using arch oil for nonstop since oh probably 2015 on every oil change. C channel frame. Get a little closer here. There's the Fumoto valve, and you'll see that one hose hanging down there with a zip tie right behind the axle. I probably shortly after I purchased the truck, I swapped the coolant from the Ford orange coolant or the yellow coolant, the gold coolant that came in the truck, to uh, a red. ELC extended life coolant. I'm using Xerox ELC in this truck. Um, at that point, I installed uh, Fumoto drain valves on the two block of uh, drains on the side of the block, and the one hose right now is attached to the block one that's behind the starter. Uh, so, if the coolant ever needs to be drained, it makes life way easier by having the Fumoto valves on it and not having to remove. The starter to get at that one drop block drain. The front area upgraded uh, springs. This truck did not have the plow prep package, 
So shortly after I purchased it, I installed the 6,000 pound springs, I believe they are. I uh, painted them red, and they look black, but you might be able to see a hint of red in there. Uh, the black from the... Fluid film, you can see here, here's a nice spot where it's not as dirty. You can see how it's kind of a yellowish, clearish substance, and you can see the kind of the gray of the under the underbody, and it's not a spot of rust anywhere. Got a full uh, manual here that I printed off a bunch of stuff from different manuals from doing different work over the years, modifications, maintenance. Uh, I've used some of it. It's just good to have. I also have a PDF of the full service manual of this truck I could put on a zip drive or email to the pr prospective buyer. The There is a bed liner. I'm not sure if it's a Ford product or if it was aftermarket like Line X. It's not a high quality one. Um, it has worn off over the years. Whoever did it did, not, did remove all of the accessories. I do have, it does have a BMW gooseneck ball in it. I've never used it. Coming from Oklahoma, this truck probably was used uh, for hauling. It was kind of working in the oil fields at times, uh, hauling goosenecks. But there was a little more idle time that I'd wish, but it's, I had not towed anything with the gooseneck since. I do have a full maintenance record of all the work done and parts and mileage and, and dates. Uh, clean the, it still has an intact EGR valve, so 73,000 miles put the rear differential cover. Uh, uh, 73,000 did the transfer case fluid. Added a 185 DC power OEM alternator, OEM type alternator, 185 amps. That was at October 14 at 75,000 miles. That one's still down there. I did do the blue spring mod or the blue spring kit uh, somewhere on here. Right away, it was real early. Blue spring kit. Um, fuel pressure spring upgrade fuel filters change every 10,000 miles at the 5 so 75 85 95 105 115 etc and then oil changes every 5,000 75 80 85 you know right around those times did start out using uh, Rotella T6 oil but have been using for the most part Dello for a long time July of 2014, I, it might actually be July of 2015, sorry, I changed the, drain the cold gold coolant, I distilled, did multiple distilled flushes, there was a workflow of flushing the system with a liquid cascade, so I did that to kind of clean it out, and then I filled it with the ZRX ELC. Ever since I have owned the truck, the deltas have been right around eight to ten degrees sometimes it was earlier on it was seven to eight and now it's more eight to ten ish uh going 65 miles an hour down the road on a flag grade uh it has not really wavered at all for the last about four or five years it's been eight to ten degrees and i'm not really worried about the oil cooler anytime soon i mean if it, if if i was in there and doing work maybe i'd change the oil cooler but right now it's certainly not a need to go in there and make do that work I have pulled the turbo, I don't, I don't know how many times, probably three, three or four times I've pulled the turbo, cleaned the exhaust side, the unison ring on these 6.0s tend to rust up and then there's uh, boost issues when it's trying to command more of the VGT and when it's rusted it doesn't get what it's commanding and then also a boost issue. Uh, so I've done that a handful of times, three or four times. Uh, it certainly is a pain in the butt, but it's it, it's much cheaper than putting a new turbo on. Uh, I also have the FickumRepair.com complete wire kit, which is four uh, gauge four and one wires between the alternator and battery and ground. I'll show that once I get under the hood. 
I've drained and filled the transmission fluid at 93,000 miles, so probably probably could do it again. Uh, done new rear left calipers. This would be the second set of tires I put on the truck. A lot of fuel. Oh, in 17, I vac I I did some work on the uh, orifice tube dryer accumulator O-rings um, and recharge the AC. It wasn't working as great as it should have been, and that has been good ever since. Uh, I do have 850 cc batteries, cold cranking amps, CCA batteries, uh, Motocraft. Last updated uh, December of 17. That was a warranty replacement at that point from the original Motocraft batteries I had purchased. I now use a trickle charger or a, not a trickle charger, a battery maintainer. Uh, when not using for long periods of time. October of 19, uh, check engine light for glow plugs. So I replaced all glow plugs and harnesses at 133,000 miles. Again, here's another remove and clean turbo, fuel filter change, oil filter changes. And then now of 2021, front U joints, ball joints, knuckle seals, dust seals, axle hub O-rings, Axle wheel kits, you know, front brake rotors, front brake pads, front left caliper bracket, lower left and right tie rod ends from Napa, front end alignment from Dave Marston, and then discount tire put the new BFG TA KO2s on with uh, valve stems and balance as well. I take it back and get them rebalanced because the ba first balance wasn't great. And then now uh, recently, August 13th, 2021, 150,000 miles, oil change with one pint of arch oil. So we'll go into the cab, open up the hood. You can see here there's a little bubble. I mean this is kind of standard, but like the little the the chrome peels off of the emblem a little bit. See that a lot. Especially on here's the one on the grill. Another little bit on the grill. This is an aftermarket chrome deflector. So the first thing you see here is this red, big red wire. This is that upgraded wire kit from Fickham Repair. It's just a, on top of the original wiring and just allows for a bigger uh, gauge of wire that connects between the hot posts on the batteries. And then there's also a fuse here on the left side. And then a bigger wire that comes off of the alternator back here to the batteries. Bigger wire, a positive and negative battery power batteries. Here is the DC power, 185 amp alternator. Better for charging when plowing. Here's the EGR valve, oil filter, fuel filter, upper fuel filter. As you can see, the red coolant. I did put a new coolant cap on one coolant coolant cap on at one time. I do have an EGT. This is actually a, the the fuel pressure sender, sending unit here. I do have and here's the EGT uh, exhaust gas temperature sen sensor down on one of the manifolds. Regular maintenance on the f air filter as needed. It does have the. Coolant filter as well. I have. I do have a new coolant filter to a filter to install. Uh, it's been a while since I've changed that. And then here's the plow wire, wiring harness. Now with the plow, depending on the new owner, if they want the plow or not, I may or may not take this stuff with me. Depends on what the new owner would wants to do in negotiations on that wiring harness for the plow. It's all connected into the lights. Here's the, the sending unit for the boost gauge, and then that's a turbo back there, which is uh, definitely a work to get back and pull the turbo out to get uh, it cleaned. I did put new O-rings on the, send, the oil sending unit for the top of the turbo. I do have a new pigtail for the VGT, uh, but I have, because the little snap thing is, is uh, broken on it, but I've never had the need to install it. I do have the VGT, the, the, send, the little pigtail though. Just haven't had a need to install it. Well, 
We'll jump in the truck and fire it up. So we're gonna see the gauges uh, activating. Fuel pressure is consistently 63, 64 PSI. And on heavy load, typically never goes below, uh, below 61. Maybe almost 60 sometimes, but that's about it. Typical boost pressures you see, you know, typically you know, 10 to 20 when you're you know, loaded not going down the highway. Rarely, I mean, if you're really getting on the throttle, you get a 25 to 27, but not much. You see, I typically I've got monitoring here on the edge, it's inside CTS. The coolant temperature, oil temperature, ICP voltage, which is in relation to the ICP pressure. Uh, typically, like this, this truck I'm tuned at the moment, uh, so the IC pr ICP pressure is usually not as accurate as what it should be. Transmission temperature, exhaust gas temperature, VGT commanded percentage, typically at the highway is about 50%. Um, when the uh, VGT is commanding like on higher loads it might command like 25% sometimes if the if the v, the unison ring is fr uh, rusted up that can't get commanded and then all of a sudden the turbo will jump back up to 80% as you're going on the highway which you have no no boost at that point then probably noticed that when I started up the battery voltage was down to 11 12 volts and that's due to the glow plugs running um, they run for close to a minute even after startup uh, and once the uh, glow plug shut off the battery voltage runs back up to you know where it needs to be in the 13 and a half range in the winter typically better battery, battery voltage when it's cold from the alternators like 14 14.2 and the, in the summer is 13. 13 and a half, 13.6, 13.7, once everything recovers. Pick and voltage, typically you want to be watching it. Uh, it's got to be no less than 48 volts on this truck. Going on the highway, it's 48 and a half, 49, um, most, for the most part. There have been no issues on the Fickham. Um, otherwise, no check engine lights. Let me shut the door. I just had some, I towed the boat this weekend, so that's why we're at 14.6. Um, been tracking fuel mileage on, on fuelly for the most part uh, for the, since I purchased it, so I can provide that information. 150,722 miles at this point. Rear view mirror. The truck is registered at 10,000 pounds in the state of Wisconsin, so those plates, the heavy truck plates go with the truck. So after long periods of sitting, uh, you know, a day or two, sometimes every now and then, light blue smoke will blow done it pretty much since day one for me I think it really also depends on what tunes running as well and if it's you know if it smokes or not I think that affects it but majority of the time it's clear so I did I did mention it was tuned 
I do have it tuned in the club box. That this would come with it as well. I've got the unravel it here. The SCT flash. Uh, and it right now I have it loaded on. It's running on SRL from Gearhead Automotive. Street racing light. That's what I've run primarily for the last five, six years. I do have uh, some tow tunes on here and then also the stock configuration is stored on this device as well. Uh, I, again, I usually use the SRL for the majority. I, it, I, the way it shifts is nice. I do have some other, other I think what WPE is another old manufacturer of tunes. But I've run the SRL for the majority, most, most part, most part, and that would come with as well. And then as far as the tunes go, I got it my, primarily to have a little more power. I'm not out racing it. I, you know, I spent a lot of money on this truck and I want it to last a long time and I don't want to, you know, be blowing the head gaskets again. So I'm not like, I'm not going out horsing it around like some people might. I just have the tunes for more, a little more power, you know, a little more power on the, you know, acceleration and such. Otherwise it's not really, there's no, I don't blow black smoke at all. That's not the way I am. If you look right now, I've got a sticker on the back that's clean diesel. Um, I'm about, not about blowing black smoke like some people are. Um, just a little more power and uh, a little more fuel efficiency as well. I have not done any work to the Ficum. The Ficum is stock. I believe the Ficum was actually replaced before I had it. I have to check the, I don't remember, I have to check the maintenance records. I have all the maintenance records from, uh, for the most part, from Ford uh, from the previous ownership. And then I also have all the receipts from things I've purchased with it as well. That's it for the 2006 Ford F350 Crew Cab Short Box Lariat. Uh, Super Duty, original windshield. It does have a crack in the windshield right there that was repaired. The chip repaired probably four or five years ago. And it has not advanced it since at all. The repair has held. And there's another one a little bit to the right, so I never found the need to replace it. Sunroof works well, so kind of walk around and show the the dings that I know of so here's one little ding that came from plowing um, little dent some scratches here's a little scratches on the back let me shut the tailgate there's a little ding scratch here I could probably we could probably could be buffed out it probably the dents would remain but Scratches probably could, could probably be buffed. Paint chips, primarily in a lot of locations, um, just from you know probably rock chips and such. There's a little rock chip here. There's a hard to see. There's a dent right here. Has been here since day since I've owned it. Barely noticeable, but it's there. Another little ding dent down here, dent there. That looks like a rock chip. Uh, there is a little paint peeling, a rock chip or something right here on the front end of, edge of the door. Not sure what that's from. I just noticed that when I was washing it the other day. Uh, there's a little little dent right here and on that. There's a rock chip. Got on the fender there. The bumper was backed into at one point, so this was actually a new. At that when it happened, this was a Ford bumper put on and repainted the plastic, and then I dinged it up from hit the plow, dropped on at one point, hooked in the plow up. And as far as the plow goes, plow is only for doing this driveway. Every now and then I do a uh, friend friend's driveway uh, but primarily is only used for this driveway some winters used a lot some winters not really dependent on the winter and I always made sure when I was shifting that the transmission was ready to engage and go to for a forward or, or reverse there's a little ding on the door frame here another one there so there I mean there are dings in the paint for being a 150,000 mile truck uh, but nothing, you know, again, no rust or anything, and it still looks good. The paint still looks primarily good. If, imagine if a good buffing or 
a waxing would pull would make it look even better and if you know we're in northern wisconsin i still got a little a couple pieces of sap on it in spots that's it for this truck um hope you like it and uh yeah there we go